Professor Rich RN here. I'm an assistant professor in the School of Nursing and I'm also an NCLEX coach. So I'm here to help you if your needs are in preparing for the NCLEX, but also if you're in nursing school struggling with any sort of concepts. Today, the lecture is gonna focus on the all important nursing process, okay? Um, Adipi, assessment, diagnose, plan, implementation, and evaluation. Adipi, right? That's what it's all about. Um, the nursing process oftentimes can be a little confusing when you're first learning for students, but then also as you progress your way through nursing school, you often might wonder, how, why am I using this nursing process? It seems like I'm only using this nursing process on these care plans or these care packets that I have to turn in. Well, in reality, everything that we do as a nurse involves this nursing process. Um, you get to the point where you just do it and you don't even realize that you're doing the nursing process. So let, before we go into the the details of the nursing process, let me just tell you a quick little story of how the nursing process applies and how we do it without even thinking about it. All right, so we go into a patient's room. They're having labored breathing. They're complaining of shortness of breath. What's our first thing that we do? We walk over to the patient and we do a quick assessment, whether the, and that includes putting on a SpO2 pulse oximeter, which now shows 88%. We can look at the chest, we see the rise and fall. Um, the respiratory rate is 24. Um, and then we can listen to their lungs real quick. But before we do that, we then want to go diagnose or come up with a nursing problem, which is, of course, they're having some sort of respiratory distress, ineffective airway clearance, perhaps. So then we plan. What are we going to do really quickly? Well, we know what we're going to do. We're going to raise the head of the bed and then we're gonna put them on op oxygen, okay? That's what we're planning. Then we do the intervention. So then we raise the head of the bed, we put them on oxygen, and then what do we do? We look at that um, pulse oximeter and see if that's gone back up to say 92 or 94% per our protocol to see if we've solved that. We reassess the patient, we listen to the lungs, we ask if the patient is still, can, still having shortness of breath. Hopefully our interventions and everything worked out, um, if not, we start all over again with our assessment and we continue. So that's a real life example of uh, how we utilize the nursing um, process really quickly on our feet without even realizing what we did, okay? So let's jump into uh, the details of that. So the nursing process is a method of organizing and delivering appropriate nursing care to a client. And that's from Potter and Perry. It's essentially what we're doing. So when we're looking at the nursing process, we do a few things. We, it's a problem solving process using the, the scientific method. It's combined with several things, right? The art of nursing, social sciences, systems theory thinking. Um, and then of course we're using our critical thinking and clinical reasoning, which let me tell you is a big piece right now, that clinical thinking, clinical judgment, clinical reasoning. That's what that new NG N NGN or next generation NCLEX is all gonna be about. So we're gonna use this nursing process a lot on that exam. And so we really need to be familiar with it. Okay, so our plan of care right? So this includes writing a nursing diagnosis, which you probably learned in nursing school. Some still are using those. Some have moved completely away from those just to nursing problems. So you'll, you'll hear me uh, mention that throughout this, um, this talk of uh, both ways. It can be a nursing diagnosis or a nursing problem interchangeably. We're going to have goals that are going to be um, expected with expected outcomes. We're going to do those with what's called SMART goals, which we'll talk about uh, in, in depth. But specifically, SMART is an acronym that stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Realistic, and Timely. Very important. We need specific interventions that with, are within our scope of practice. And then, of course, we have to evaluate what we just did to see if it worked and if we what else we can do to help the patient. Why do we do it? Promote conti uh, continuity of care. Um, and then also an outcome criteria for evaluating our patients under our nursing care if they're, you know, getting better or not. All right, so ADIPI, as I like to refer to it as, that first step is assessment. So that assessment piece is huge, right? So we can do that in a variety of different ways, but we have to collect and verify patient data. The primary source of that is going to be the patient themselves, right? They're the person that's going to answer our questions, most likely, and they're the person that we're going to touch our stethoscope to, listen to their heart and lungs. We can palpate with our hands and check pulses and all that sort of stuff. So they're the primary source. There is a secondary source, and so your secondary source is going to be 
let's say a family member that's in the room that's providing information, they're considered a secondary source. The medical record is a secondary source, not just their past medical history, but the labs, right? The x-ray, whatever those things show, those are secondary assessment pieces that'll help us put this picture together for this patient. So our assessment, the purpose is to establish a baseline. We really need to have a baseline to know what's getting better on this patient or what's potentially getting worse for this patient. So we have subjective data and objective data, okay? Objective data is verifiable data that I can go in and do as a nurse, and you can walk in and also do that same thing. The same with a, like for example, vital signs. Put a temperature underneath their tongue, it's, you know, 36.8. You come in right after me, that's objective data, you get the same thing. Subjective is something that the patient is relaying to us. For example, the patient says, I have pain three out of 10 in my ankle. There's no real way for us to verify that. So that's subjective information. The same way if the patient states they're having anxiety, that's also subjective. The patient states that they're having nausea, subjective. The patient states that they're having vomiting or emesis. Well, that we can, we can be objective because we could see the emesis and the vomiting. So those are the two different types. Um, and so our assessment is the big, the basis for our individualized plan of care. And it's essentially that first very, very important step of that nursing process. So again, we kind of touched on it on the last photo that I showed you, but we want to interview the patient. We want to do a health history. We do a physical exam or a focused assessment on whatever is uh, ailing the patient at that time. Um, we can observe the client's behavior. We can look at some diagnostics, which would again be um, a secondary source like our labs, um, any uh, like x-rays, CT scans, all that sort of stuff. Um, and each point provides a data point for us to help figure out what is going on and helps us come up with that diagnosed problem or that nursing problem that we're looking for. So once we've gathered that assessment, now we move to the diagnose slash nursing problem aspect. All right, so Nanda, I'm not gonna talk too much about Nanda because like I said, some schools are still using Nanda heavily. Some schools have gotten completely away from that. Nanda in itself is not gonna be on the NCLEX, but you'll kind of need to understand um, Nanda in the form of a problem on the NCLEX, all right? So uh, for example, a patient is having a respiratory issue. That's a nursing problem, a res respiratory uh, respiratory concern. That's a problem. Nanda would be, you have to use those specific words like ineffective gas exchange, right? Both can very similar. So remember a patient can have a problem that can be both whether we're talking a, a NANDA diagnosis or just a specific nursing problem, it can be an actual problem or an at-risk problem, right? So let's say, for example, a patient came from surgery and they had a left tib-fib fracture, and so they're post-op day one and you're the nurse. An actual problem is acute pain in that left tib-fib where they had the surgery, okay? A potential problem or an at-risk would be an at-risk for infection at the surgery site. Okay, so we gotta watch out for both of those. All right, so we've talked about assessment, that's our, and then we talked about diagnose or come up with a nursing problem. And then our next step is come up with a plan. What are we gonna do about our findings or our nursing problem that we found? So this is gonna be individualized based upon the patient and the assessment findings that you as the nurse found. So our key aspects are determine the immediate priorities. And that's very important for the NCLEX as well and the patient in real life. But anything that's gonna cause harm to the patient, that's what we need to focus on. You've heard probably airway, breathing, circulation, very important. So anything that's affecting those three things, that is your immediate priority that is what we're gonna to plan to address or fix, okay? So we can establish goals and expected outcomes and determine some interventions that are gonna help us with those immediate priorities. 
So you also wanna kind of think about immediate, but also think about if I don't address this, it could result in harm to my patient. That's the answer that they're probably looking for on the NCLEX or your nursing exam. If it's gonna cause harm, that's my, what I need to uh, deal with. All right, so this, this is planning, setting priorities. This is just a recap of kind of what I've just said over the last couple photos there. Um, our established priorities of care are established to identify order of priority. So always ABCs first, airway, breathing, circulation. We should all know that. Um, high priorities, again, if untreated, are gonna result in harm. Immediate priorities are non-emergent, non-life-threatening needs of a client. Okay, and then low priority client needs that may be directly related to specific illness or prognosis, but may affect their future well-being. Okay, so let me give you an example of priorities in a simple term. That same patient who just came back from surgery with that left tib fib fracture, okay? You check out that dressing and it's very saturated with blood. So blood is actively bleeding at the surgical site. You also note that the patient is complaining of 10 out of 10 pain. And then you also noted in part of your care plan was to educate this patient to on smoking cessation because you know smoking is going to hinder healing of their incisional wound and then also has negative aspects just overall in their well overall health being. So if we look at those in simple terms, what's the highest priority? Of course, dealing with the active bleeding, we don't want them to bleed out, so that's the highest priority. Then pain, of course, we're gonna deal with the pain, but then that's the immediate, intermediate problem. And then our lowest priority in that situation I mentioned is going to be dealing with the smoking cessation. We have 12 hours with them, we might even see them tomorrow. So educating them on smoking cessation, yes, is important and it's gonna affect their well being but dealing with an active bleed is much more important. Dealing with 10 out of 10 pain, much more important than saying, hey, do you wanna stop smoking, right? If, someone is ha let's, if someone's at a 10 out of 10 pain and you get them to say, hey, I wanna talk to you about stopping smoking. How would you feel if I print you out some papers and we have a long, nice, hard talk? You think they're gonna be up for that? Heck no, they got 10 out of 10 pain. They need you to deal with that, right? So that's kind of how you're gonna do your priorities. Think about that as you're answering your NCLEX questions. All right, so part of the planning process, once you have the priority, um, we have to come up with a goal, okay? These goals need to be utilizing that SMART format, as I mentioned, which is that acronym. S is, spe is specific, M is it measurable, a, is it attainable, achievable, or actionable? Depending on which text or something that you're looking at, all, all of those A words all work. Then you have realistic for the R, and then T, is it timely, okay? So I'm gonna go back to that photo. Let's look at the photo at the bottom. We have two options. Patient will report no pain, and the patient will report a pain score of less than five during the next 24 hours. Let's look at this individually. So anytime you're asked to evaluate a goal or come up with your goal, you wanna evaluate using um, that SMART criteria. So patient will report no pain. Let's look at that using um, the, S, the S. Is it specific? Yeah. Is it measurable? Patient report no pain? It's measurable because we can measure it on that zero out of 10 scale. Is it attainable? Well, we really don't know. If it's that patient that has a tib-fib fracture and they're just post-op day one, to expect them to have zero out of 10 pain, very unrealistic, so it's not attainable. Also, I just mentioned it's not realistic, so that's not realistic as well. And timing, it doesn't give any sort of time. The patient will report no pain. Does that mean the rest of their life they're never gonna report pain? Oh, probably not. Again, not a realistic goal, so that is not a good goal. Let's look at the second piece. Patient will report a pain score of less than five during the next 24 hours. Okay, specific? Yes, it's very specific. Is it measurable? Yes, it's zero to 10 scale. We still got that. Is it attainable? Less than five seems like it's an attainable because it's a reasonable goal. Um, are realistic? Yeah, realistic, it's reasonable. Have a pain less than five. And we have that T for timing. Less than 24 hours is very important because it has that timing piece. So that would qualify as a SMART goal, okay? The next, another piece of your uh, planning piece 
here is coming up with interventions. These are gonna be action steps that you're gonna take as the nurse or something that you can delegate to someone else that are gonna help us achieve that outcome that we just came up with, okay? So like I said, it's gonna be something that we, within our scope of practice, all right? So if the patient is at risk for infection, we're gonna monitor vital signs. We can delegate that, but taking vital signs is within our scope of practice. Administering um, antipyretics for fever, scope of practice, but giving, so prescribing antibiotics, that's not in our scope of practice. So that would not be an intervention. So anything that we cannot do is not an intervention that you would put, okay? Just as a reminder is a common uh, scope of practices, things that we use for our interventions when developing a care plan for nursing practice would be activities of daily living, sleep and rest, ventilation perfusion, deep breathe and cough, incentive spirometer, those all fall under that category, circulation, uh, nutrition, elimination, um, skin, sexuality, health education, health promotion, counseling, Education is such a big piece of our job as nurses. It almost can be an intervention in almost anything that we do. Okay, so we've talked assessment. We trust a diagnose, coming up with a nursing problem. We've made a plan using outcomes. We figured out which interventions we're gonna use. And our next step is going to be implement those. So the implementation phase is essentially carrying out the developed plan of care that you came up with, right? That can be teaching, assessing, reassessing, helping with ADLs, all those sort of things. Next, we get to that last piece, which is very important. It's, and that last piece is the evaluation piece of the nursing process. Without the evaluation, the, without the evaluation, we don't know if our plan and our interventions work properly. So that evaluation is key to um, our nursing process phase. So first, was that goal met? Was it not met or was it partially met? Depending on that goal, we want to identify factors that maybe prevented us from meeting that goal or, or ways that we can additionally meet that goal and then identify the need to potentially modify that plan. So before we talked about that patient with the left hip fib fracture who had a pain, you know, pain, pain and our goal was to keep it under five for 24 hours. Well, unfortunately, we did not meet that goal and that patient was around six to seven. All right, so we have to modify that goal. Now we can say patient will report pain, pain score of less than six for the next 24 hours. So now we can continue our interventions, but now we've modified that to be more realistic for that patient because they were having uh, quite a bit of pain. That evaluation piece is important because now it allows us to go back, reassess, and do all those same steps over again. We don't just do the nursing process once, we do it again and again and again and again. Well, hopefully that short little presentation helped clarify the nursing process for some of you. It's gonna be very important on the NGN and it's gonna be very important in your nursing careers that you have a good grasp of that. I have another video available that we do the nursing process utilizing a case study so how you can see it in real time. Hope you have an opportunity to check that out. Other than that, I hope you have a wonderful day.